What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. When I started developing games a little over a year ago, one of my biggest goals was to put out my first Steam game. I spent my first year of game development learning and putting out small projects and participating in game jams, but I never felt comfortable enough to take that first step towards putting out a commercial release. And that was honestly because I wasn't really sure what I enjoyed making yet. When I started, I had aspirations of creating a game like Journey or a game like Inside or all these amazing single player campaigns that are so beautiful artistically and really pack an amazing message. But after learning more about the industry and what it takes to create one of these amazing games, I realized that I need to take a step back and to just focus on my strengths and what I feel I could bring to the pool of millions of games that are already out there. Not only that though, I just needed to focus on following the fun. Although I do occasionally love a good single player game, I'm a lot more interested in multiplayer experiences. I've always had more fun playing games like Overcooked or Super Smash Bros, just having a good time with my friends. Although making games and playing games are a lot different, they both share the fact that you need to be having fun in doing them. When I started to realize these things, I moved away from brainstorming these big single player ventures and just started brainstorming smaller multiplayer experiences that I felt I could make within a couple months time. It's important to me that I keep this first Steam game within scope and make sure I have a first prototype within a few months because I don't want to spend too much time making a game that's bad and putting so much focus into a game that people aren't even going to like anyway. I want to be able to have a working prototype, not the finalized version, but a game that people can play, have them play it, get feedback, and if I need to redirect my focus or go a different direction, I'll be able to do that. I wanted the game to be an accessible party game, but also have some strategic elements. I envision it being a team-based multiplayer game that would require a lot of good communication skills. After a lot of brainstorming sessions and a lot of scrapped ideas, I settled on a game about battling spaceships. It would be a 2 on 2 or a 3 on 3 or 4 on 4 multiplayer game where each team would manage a ship or a fleet of ships and try to defeat the other team. Your team would have to navigate your ships around the arena, enable and disable shields, fire weapons, and manage deployments of fighter pilots. On top of all that though, the teams would have to manage their energy supply. Each of these tasks would have some sort of energy cost that the team would have to manage and make decisions based off of. Because of that, the game would involve some level of risk calculation as well. I also felt like the idea was broad enough for me to be able to follow the fun and change my mind along the way. The first step I took in making this game was setting up the network architecture. I had already followed a Photon tutorial about how to set up a simple game and spawn players to rooms and have them interact with each other and have their movements sync across the server, so I basically just had to adapt that for my use case. I'm not sure exactly how I want my cameras to work in the game and if I want to do third person or first person, but for now I'm doing a first person camera because I want the players to really feel like they're a crew member of the ship and have to move around to different parts of the ship to get things done. I also had to spawn players to different ships because there would be a fleet of ships for each team or a single ship for each team. I'm really not sure how I'm going to do it yet, but regardless, I would have to spawn them in different locations and give them different team assignments. So so for now I just set up two different ships and whenever players join the room they are assigned to a ship based on the number player they are in the room. So with player movement syncing and with the spawn system working I decided to move into making what I would call the 3D grid view or the 3D mini map of the game. It's basically a 3D grid that's a scaled down view of everything going on in the arena. So it would show where ship 2 is relative to ship 1 and just anything else that's going on in the game. For now I envision it being pretty central to how ships are moved around the map. I made the grid model in Blender by basically inverting all the surfaces of the cube. In Unity, only one side of a face is rendered and the other side is transparent. So if you look at a cube in Unity, you obviously see all the faces and it's not transparent or see-through or anything, but if you move the camera inside the cube, you'll be able to see through it because there are no faces on the inside. So by inverting the normals of the faces in Blender, I'm essentially making the faces face inside the cube so that when it exports to Unity, you'll always be able to see inside the cube no matter how you rotate it. 
This is exactly the kind of functionality that I want for my grid. I want players to be able to rotate the grid around and always be able to see the objects that are inside of it. Once I had the model imported into Unity, I created a nice grid shader for it that would give it a nice sci-fi, out of this world type feel. I set up the grid with its own camera and its own script that would rotate it based on a click and drag functionality of the mouse. With the grid set up, I was able to spawn in my ship objects. The scale from the grid to the real game was one to 1000. So to spawn the ship objects in the grid, I basically took the position and the scale of the real ship, divided them by a thousand and assigned it to a new cube within the grid. I also wanted players to be able to use the grid view to move their ships around. Since the grid was 10 by 10 by 10, I added an interface to allow players to input an X coordinate, a Y coordinate and a Z coordinate each between between 0 and 10 and the ships in the real arena would move to the position corresponding to the grid location inputted. With that I had a really nice system where players would be assigned to a ship and spawn on them, be able to move around the ship and also go into grid view and assign a new desired location for their ship and have the ship move to that location and have everything be synced on the network. Although it took me a few more days than I wanted it to, I'm really happy with this foundation that I built and I'm excited to add more to this game. If you want to follow the development of of whatever this game is going to be called, please subscribe and stay tuned. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Slow it down to a medium groove.